Russian President Vladimir Putin says that starting from Friday, foreign buyers must pay for gas in the Russian currency and has threatened to halt gas supply contracts if payments in rubles are not made from accounts in Russian banks. Today I signed a decree uh, setting up the rules of uh, trading of Russian gas, natural gas, with the so-called unfriendly states. We suggest to our counterparties from those countries a clear and uh, transparent scheme. In order to purchase Russian natural gas, they should open uh, ruble accounts in the Russian banks. It's exactly from those accounts payments will be executed uh, for the gas uh, supply starting from tomorrow, from April the 1st. In case uh, such payments uh, uh, fail and not executed, we'll consider them as uh, uh, non-payment uh, from uh, our counterparties. Uh, nobody sells us uh, free of charge anything, and we're not going to do charity either. All the existing contracts uh, will be suspended. Let's get the latest live now from Moscow with our correspondent Jenny Hill. Jenny, welcome to you. Vladimir Putin warned or threatened of this last week and now it seems he is going ahead with the threat. What more did he say? Yeah, um, before I tell you more about what he had to say, I think it's probably worth talking about what's actually in this decree he signed and what this actually means in practice. Um, because those Western countries will not have to hand over rubles for gas. What will happen uh, is that Russia has set up a special mechanism. So your average Western country, say Germany, will pay euros into a special bank account at Gazprom Bank. The bank will then take that currency, trade it on the stock exchange here in return for rubles. The rubles will then go back into a second Russia bank account from which the payment will be made in return for the gas. So in practice, it's rather different from this, you know, great headline that Western companies will have to uh, come up with, with rubles for the gas, otherwise they're going to get cut off. So we'll have to see how this actually starts to work. But I think it's important just outlining that the actual in practice is a li little bit more convoluted than perhaps Mr. Putin is suggesting in, in that press statement. So that would imply that we've had reaction from Germany and France already rejecting these demands that they pay for gas in rubles. Um, is there, though, a compromise, do you think? Well, I, this sounds on the face of it to almost be a bit of a compromise. Um, we know that Vladimir Putin outlined this mechanism on the telephone to Olaf Scholz last night. Now, Mr. Scholz came away by all accounts a little bit confused, but the headlines um, last night in Germany were saying it looks as though we will be able to technically pay in euros. So let's see um, what, what countries make of this. Um, but certainly worth bearing in mind how this is going to work in practical terms. Um, there's no doubt that Vladimir Putin is on really belligerent form this afternoon. Look, his country is really burdened by sanctions. The invasion hasn't perhaps gone as well as he wanted it to, but he is really hitting back, rhetorically at least, against the West. You know, in this uh, speech, this televised speech, he was uh, blaming the West for waging an economic war against Russia, a war that it's been waging, he said, for years now. You know, the West would have brought in sanctions against us anyway. They'd have found an excuse. Um, this was, I think, very much, or at least in part, focused on his domestic audience. He's telling them that Western sanctions are the price Russia has to pay for its freedom and independence. He's walking a bit of a tightrope, isn't he, though? Because while Europe is heavily dependent on Russian gas, Germany in particular, um, they are already looking elsewhere. Does he think that he's got them over a barrel in that they will have to comply, otherwise they will risk having no gas? It's really hard to know what's inside Vladimir Putin's head. Um, we know, of course, that he'd quite like to sell some of those natural resources to other countries, perhaps China, for example. Um, but he knows, too, that yeah, um, the money coming in from Western countries in return for gas in particular is, is important. Um, but I think, as we've seen throughout the last few weeks, he has told Russian people it, it could get tough. You know, these sanctions, international isolation are going to make it tough for the Russian economy. But he tends to trot out two narratives in relation to that. The first is 
the West is going to suffer as a result of these sanctions too. And we've just seen a little bit more of that, actually. He's warning Europeans they're going to see massive job losses um, as a result of global instability. He said, too, um, that there's going to be a migrant crisis in a, a wave of migrants into Europe again. Um, and he also tells Russians that this is Western aggression and that Russia is just going to have to crack on with it and do its best and get through it. And I think we saw a little bit of this earlier from his spokesman, actually, when he was talking about those intelligence reports that suggested that Vladimir Putin wasn't entirely in touch with what was happening in Ukraine and had been poorly advised. Um, the Kremlin sought there to say that the West doesn't really understand the Kremlin. It doesn't understand Vladimir Putin or the way that Russia makes decisions. And I think there is something going on there in the way that Russia is trying to suggest that it is different, obviously, from the West, but it is a different place that does things in its own way. It's drawing up that drawbridge, if you like.